Chapter twenty three of the Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Bria Snow. Chapter twenty three. Visiting. But is a young woman to be always actively employed? Is not time to be allocated her for mere passive enjoyments? May she never unbend her mind from what is called duty? May she never lay herself, as it were, on the bosom of her family and friends? May she never seat herself on the living green amid roses and violets, or on the mossy bank studded with presses or cowslips, and laved by the crystal stream? May she never view the silver fish as he leaps up and dumbly speaks the praise of God? May she never wander abroad for the sake of wandering, or ride for the sake of riding, or gaze on the blue ethereal by day, or the star-spangled canopy by night. Far be it from me to say any such thing, for I know not to whom such exercises, as such exercises merely, may or may not be necessary. That they may be useful to some cannot be doubted, but that they are far from being useful or even innocent to all is quite certain. It is certain, I say, that mere passive exercises are not only unnecessary with many, but sometimes wrong. The young woman who is trained, or has commenced training herself on truly Christian principles, and who enjoys a tolerable measure of health, will hardly find special seasons of this sort necessary or desirable. She will find sufficient relaxation amid the routine of active life and her daily occupations and in her labours of love and charity. The society of sisters, brothers, parents, grandparents, of companions indeed of every sort with whom she mingles at home or at school, will afford her at times every enjoyment even of the passive sort which she really needs, or which, if she has the true spirit of Christ, she will heartily desire. In her duties to these, nay, even in her very duties to herself, in the kitchen, the garden, or the field, she will have ample opportunity of descanting on the beauties and glories of the animal and vegetable world, and on the wonders of the starry heavens, in pruning and watering and weeding the vines and plants, she may drink in as much as she pleases of the living green, as well as feast her eyes anon on the blue expanse, and in her walks of charity and mercy, whether alone or in company with others, she may also receive the nectar of heaven, as it glistens and invites from nature's own cup, as in rich draughts, as if she were merely lounging and seeking for pleasure, nay, even in richer ones, by as much as active exercise of body and mind gives her the better mental and physical appetite. It is one of the strongest proofs that we have a benevolent creator, the head of the world in which we live, that he has made duty and enjoyment perfectly compatible, so that in pursuing the pathway of the former, we almost inevitably make sure of the latter. And it is also equally remarkable, if not an equally strong proof of benevolence, that in seeking enjoyment as such, without seeking it in a path of duty, we seldom find it, or if found, it is but half enjoyed. There is nothing in this world, or hardly anything, to say the least, which should be done for the mere sake of doing it. We labour not for the sake of labouring alone. We eat not, we drink not, for the sake merely of eating and drinking. At least we should not would we obtain the whole benefit of eating and drinking. Nor should we even amuse ourselves for the sake alone of the amusement. Double ends are often secured by a single means, nay, almost always so. I speak now of the woman, not of the infant or the child. Social visits among friends and neighbours for the mere sake of the passive enjoyment, therefore, in the earliest years of infancy, may do exceedingly well as a preparation for the more active and more truly Christian visits of maturer years and later life. They are useful in elevating ourselves and others to a state where such visiting is not so needful to our happiness. 
as to many forms of visiting current among us such as morning calls evening parties and calls of any sort which answer none of the real purposes of visiting tending neither to make ourselves or anybody else wiser or better but on the contrary to make society worse indirectly i have never found any apology for them which seemed to me sufficient to satisfy a rational intelligent immortal spirit to come together late in the evening just to eat and drink together that which ought not to be eaten and drunk at all or if at all certainly not at such an hour to hold conversation an hour or two under the influence of some sort of excitement physical or moral got up for the occasion on topics which were of little comparative importance of which the most valuable part often is the inquiry how do you do and the consequent replies to it to trifle the time away until ten eleven or twelve o'clock and then go home through the cold damp atmosphere perhaps thinly clad to suffer that night for want of proper and sufficient sleep and the next day from indigestion and a thousand other evils what can be more truly pitiable not to say ridiculous nor is the practice of putting on a new dress or one which if not new we are quite willing to exhibit and of going to see our neighbours and staying just long enough to ask how they do say a few stale or silly things and prove an interruption and a nuisance and then going elsewhere a whit more justifiable in beings made in the image of god and who are to be accountable at his eternal bar let it not be said that i disapprove of visiting entirely on the grounds of condemnation at the final day it is represented in the twenty-fifth chapter of matthew as being ye visited me not that is did not visit in the name and for the sake of the judge those whom god has made it a duty no less than a privilege to visit and can i set myself with impunity against that which my saviour has encouraged and yet pretend to be one of his followers what would be more presumptuous i am not an enemy to visiting if done with a view to glorify god and the benefit of mankind let young women visit indeed but let it be done in a way which will be approved by the saviour and judge but there may be dissipation in the garb of visiting and it is still oftener nothing more than the garb of indolence it is not visiting but visiting without a definite or important purpose to which i object it is not visiting itself but the abuse of visiting celestial spirits for what we know are much employed in visiting and shall not man be so are we to belong to their society hereafter and yet not be their associates we to associate with them and yet remain solitaries could such a thing be is not man here and hereafter as i have already insisted a social being and if so shall not his social nature and social powers be early and successfully developed and cultivated let our visits but promote the purposes of benevolence and nothing can of propriety be said against them I would wage no war on this point except with selfishness. End of chapter 23